أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يهدله فلا حدي فلا حدي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تمتنا إلى وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس أتكوا ربكم الذي كلك من نفس من نفس واحد وكلك منها زوجها وبث منهما رجلا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تصنون به والارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سعيدا سعيدا يسر لكم وعملكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فزون عظيما I seek refuge with almighty God Allah from shaitan or satan the rejected one with Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer praise be to Allah and to Allah alone it is in him that we seek his forgiveness from our transgressions and we consign ourselves to his protection against the evils that we create within our own souls and against any offenses that we've committed against ourselves or others truly whomsoever Allah guides on the straight path there is none that can lead astray and whosoever Allah deflects and keeps away from his straight path there is none that can serve as a guide i witness that there is none that deserves to be served nor worshiped but Allah and i witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that prayers and peace be upon him as his servant and his messenger o believers fear allah as he should be feared and die not unless we die as muslims or in a state of islam o mankind fear the punishment from your lord who created you from a single person and from that single person created his spouse and from them scattered about a countless number of men and women and fear allah whom you claim your mutual rights from one another and be careful in observing your duties to the wombs that gave you birth for allah is the one who watches over all of us o believers fear allah with consistency and say only that in which is fair that in which is sound and correct before allah then and only then will he change or rectify your deeds and cover your sins with his divine forgiveness and whosoever obeys allah and his messengers has indeed secured the most absolute and glorious success my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam again we greet you in the quranic greeting of peace assalamu alaykum in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لن تنوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فانما الله به عليم in the translation for this verse from surah ali imran the 92nd verse and it has been translated as roughly with God's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer by no means shall you attain albir or righteousness or piety unless you spend in Allah's cause and of that which you love and whatever good you spend or sacrifice Allah knows it well so this ayah is an ayat that sometimes is used as a precursor to the upcoming month of Ramadan. Today inshallah we would like to speak with you um as we prepare ourselves our minds, our bodies 
and our spirits to enter the holy month of Ramadan. May Allah make it easy for us. And in this month, it is a time to purify ourselves, our total selves, that we may attain the excellence that human life potentially has preserved for us. And we know that the reward, the reward for this sacrifice during the month of fasting, the reward, one of the great rewards, or the ultimate rewards, is paradise, or al-jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُطِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَسْسِيَامُ كَمَا قُطِبَ أَلَىٰ أَلَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ عَلَىٰكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may learn self-restraint or self-discipline and that you may attain taqwa or piety or God consciousness. So when we look at these two verses, the first verse that we read implies that we must be willing in order to obtain righteousness the first thing Allah reminds us of is that and when we read the Quran we should read the Quran as though Allah is speaking to us as believers as individual believers we shouldn't read it as though this is a book that was revealed for people 14 centuries ago but this book has been given to us as well today and we should read it as though Allah is actually speaking to us. So when we look at it from that context, we then understand that Allah is telling us as individuals and also collectively that we shall not become people of piety or righteousness unless we are first willing to make sacrifices. And we know in the month of fasting, we sacrifice many things and he says here that we must be willing to, to spend or to sacrifice on those things that we love and the most obvious thing that comes to mind every year for us as well as particularly those who are not fasting but who are amongst us is the sacrifice of food and drink this is the first thing that comes to mind and when people ask ask us the uh, continued question during the month of fasting how is it that you could make this kind of sacrifice how is it that you can give up food and water for this year approximately 18 hours a day and we remind them that Allah says لا تنرو البير حتى تنفكوا مما تحبون that you shall not, none of us will not obtain righteousness unless we're willing to make sacrifices of those things that we love. And none of us, none from amongst us, loves any less food and water. We all love food and water because we need it. We need food and water to sustain us. But we also know that food is, it, it has a a cultural identification. So people take great pride when they come to the masjid on for uh, the iftar and bring the various foods from their cultural background. And they want to share those things that they love with those that they love, the fasting people. And so we must keep in mind that we have to be willing to give during this month. We should prepare ourselves. If we've held back throughout the year, this is the month that we want to be willing to make the great sacrifices. If we've held back giving money, if we've held back giving time, in this month Allah says that He has given you special opportunities to make up for that and gain the great rewards now in this month that cannot be replaced by the other 11. So we must keep these things in mind as we prepare our minds, our bodies, 
and our spirits for the fast. And in the second ayah that we read, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you. So it's a prescription. And a prescription is given particularly for specific ailments. We don't prescribe, the doctor doesn't prescribe things for uh, the stomach that is good for the heart. But Allah has given us a prescription that has been made good for us for the whole body. And not only the body, but also the mind and the spirit. So we have a total prescription in, this, in the fasting that the abstinence from food and drink prepares us to gain the great rewards that come later on. And we begin to experience some of those rewards as each day transpires throughout the month. We begin to physically feel better. Psychologically, we begin to feel sharper. And we begin to uh, have a sense of being closer to our Lord from reading the Quran daily and making the Salah in congregation. Because we know during the month of fasting, the Muslims are more inclined to be uh, motivated to come to the masjid, to be more kind, and to be ready to make the sacrifices once again. That we were a little bit uh, lazy during the year. And so Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the opportunity by this prescription that He has given us to learn self-discipline, to be more conscious of those things that we have been ordered to do throughout the year. It's not that these things are only given to us during Ramadan, but during the Ramadan we are more conscious of those things that we have neglected. During Ramadan we are more conscious of trying to make up for those things. We see people coming to the masjid that have not attended the masjid all year during Ramadan. Now that is not a statement of judgment. I'm not judging my brothers and sisters when, when, when they do that. But we should understand something. Just to come during that month and not to come during the other months doesn't ultimately give us what we think it gives us. Because we also have a requirement to keep up these acts of discipline, of self-discipline, making the prayers on time, if possible in congregation in the masjid. We should try and establish a habit. In fact, for those of us who have been very good in keeping these practices, then when Ramadan comes around, it's much easier because we've already established these things. They've become a natural part of our life. That muscle, that moral muscle has been well flexed throughout the year. But for those who have been somewhat negligent throughout the year, they will find it more of a challenge when the month comes in. If we've been fasting throughout the year, trying at least to make the efforts to fast, then when those first days come in, it is something that is not unfamiliar to us because we've given ourselves the opportunity to be obedient to the call of those things that have already been prescribed for us that makes us better people and more disciplined. And finally, in this part of the khutbah, we want to emphasize that this self-discipline or uh, the willingness to obey the injunctions that Allah has prescribed for us during Ramadan, it increases us in taqwa. And taqwa is something that, you do, that we are not born with. It is something that we can attain only from effort. To fear Allah and to be conscious of Allah is something that we have to be willing to be conscious of. We have to be willing to get up out of the bed for Fajr this time of the year at 4.30, at 5 o'clock. Not later than this morning, 5.49. We have to be willing to do that. This is what gives us the gain. This is what helps us to gain taqwa. We don't get taqwa because we're born in Saudi Arabia. We don't get taqwa because we're African Americans. We don't get taqwa because we say we're Muslims. We get taqwa 
because we are willing to do those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called us to. This is what helps us to be conscious of God. Making the connections that Allah has prescribed for us and keeping those things in our lives with sincerity and with genuineness. This is what brings us closer to Almighty God. And when we gain this closeness, then the protection is given to us that we cannot see. Allah protects us in ways that we cannot even visibly see. There may be things that shaitan has set out in the road for us. But if we, as people, obey the call of Allah, Allah will remove those things. Because ultimately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the author of every single thing in this universe. And those things that shaitan tries to put in our way, the distractions, this is, more, this is no more than what they are. There are no more brothers and sisters in distraction. They can do no harm to us. If we obey the call and be, uh, get this God consciousness that the Quran refers to, this taqwa, to be amongst the muttaqeen, those people who have an appetite to get close to God. It is not an accident, but it is purposeful and intentional. Those people... God will lay out for them the way to paradise, both as a precursor in this world that we live in, as well in the world, as well as the world that comes after this. So we ask Almighty God to prepare us, mind, body, and spirit, for what awaits us during this month of fasting, because it is a gift that has been given to you and I. It is rahmah or mercy from Allah that we have fasting. Think about it. The people wonder why we do this. And many of us are at a level that we know we can't live without it. Look at the contrast. Where someone is at a human level where they think this is something that they cannot do. And we have come to the maturity by the grace of Allah where we know now that we look, we look for, month, for, for the month of Ramadan to come to us in such a way that before it arrives, we, welcome, we throw out the welcome mat and say, come, Ramadan, we welcome you. We welcome everything that you have for us because we know the challenges that await us during this month. If we pass these tests, it will increase us in taqwa. It will give us more of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly wants for the believing people. But we should know that we must, make, we must be willing to make the efforts. We have to have the mind and the heart, the courage to enjoin what is right and to forbid what is wrong throughout the month. We have to be more conscious and aware of those things that we may have neglected throughout the year in order to get the supreme benefits of what this month awaits. And he says to us through the Prophet in the Hadith that there is a door for those who have completed the month with excellence that only the fasting people who have fasted with excellence will walk through on the Day of Judgment. Only those people will walk through that door. So my dua is that all of us in this room will be amongst those that will walk through that door that is my prayer for you. That it will not be uh, that in which will be reserved only as some people believe that they have this reservation by birth. No. No one has the door to paradise from birth. They must go through the challenges of life and meet the struggles that all humanity must meet in order to gain the great favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has waiting for the believing people aqulu kul hada astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innallahu ghafurur rahim walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin bismillahir rahmanir rahim والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله 
صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اجمعين عما بعد وعليه المسلمون so the month of ramadan the quran says is that in which was revealed the quran and a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance in the criterion so whoever sights the moon on this month let him fast during it and whoever is ill or on a journey then let an equal number of days be made up allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardship or difficulty and he wants for you to complete the period and to glorify allah that which he has guided you to that perhaps you may be grateful so fasting during this month is obligatory we must unless we're ill or have the means or do not have the means to complete the fast we are obligated as adults males and females and there are requirements for females throughout the month where they are exempt for those who may have questions about whether or not they are able to fast or should fast i would suggest that you consult with learned people the imam others in the community who may have been fasting for several years and ask these questions don't take it upon ourselves to assume that we should or should not we must know what allah has prescribed for us that we may gain ultimately its benefits and allah in in uh, uh, pardon me the prophet peace be upon him says in a hadith o people a great month has come over you a blessed month a month in which is a night that is better than a thousand months a month in which allah has made it compulsory upon you to fast by day and voluntarily to pray by night whoever draws nearer to allah by performing any of the optional good deeds in this month shall receive the same reward as performing an obligatory deed at any other time and whoever discharges an obligatory deed in this month shall receive the reward of performing 70 obligations at any other time it is the month of patience and the reward of patience is paradise it is the month of charity and the month in which a believer's sustenance is increased whoever then gives food to a fasting person to break his fast shall have his sins forgiven and he will be saved from the fire of hell and he shall have the same reward as the fasting person without his reward being diminished at all so dear muslims let us strive to learn the quran during this month to study it daily and if possible read an entire juz which is 1/30th of the quran this has become an established tradition amongst muslims throughout the world if we can try and attend all of the tarawih prayers or the extra prayers that are done in the evening as much as we can and to learn as much as we can about the various aspects and the requirements of our religion we should increase ourselves in doing as many good acts as we possibly can throughout this month including all forms of service to humanity we should try to as much as we can to be good to ourselves and to others as much as we possibly can throughout the month and especially during the final 10 days may allah make it easy for us as believers and grant us his mercy forgive us from our sins our human errors and our inborn deficiencies and save us from the torment of the fire allahumma amin allahumma adina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man awfayt فَتَوَلَّنَا فِيمَنْ تَوَلَّيْتَ 
وبالغ إنا فيما أعطيت قاكنا شرق ما قديت إنك تكتي ولا يكتو عليك إنه لا يعزو أمان وعليت ولا يعزو أمان عديت تبارك ربنا وأتى عليت نأستغفرك ونأتوب إليك وصلى الله على النبي الكريم اللهم أكفل لنا للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار اللهم إن كفوا تحب الأفوا فعني اللهم إني على ذكر وشكر وحسن وإبادك وصلى الله على النبي كريم وصلى الله على نبي مرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين O oh Allah, favor us with guidance and include us amongst those who have been guided by you. Favor us with security and include us amongst those who have been made secure by you. And protect us and include us amongst those who are under your protection. And bless that which you have decreed, for you alone are the decreer. And no one else can decree against you. No one can debase the one whom you have taken under your protection. And no one can have honor whom you have declared an enemy. For you are blessed, O oh our Lord, and highly exalted are you. Therefore, we beg your forgiveness and we repent before you. And Allah, we ask that the peace be upon Prophet Muhammad. O oh Allah, grant forgiveness to us, to the believing men and women, to the Muslim men and women, and unite our hearts and set our affairs correctly before us and help us against those who stand against faith. O oh our Lord, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter and save us from the torment of the fire. O oh Allah, verily you are most forgiving, you love forgiving, therefore we ask that you forgive us from our sins. O oh Allah, help us at your remembrance, at your thanks, and at your excellence in worship. And all praise is due to Allah, the guardian evolver, cherisher, and sustainer of all the world. Ameen wa qamatu salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Thank you. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sure we have enough room. I'm sure we have enough room to make sujood. Let us get as close as we can. Let us leave no gaps in the line. Toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder. Okay, good? Okay. Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الطالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد وولد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد أيسب عليه يقدر عليه أحد يقول ألخذ مع اللبدا أيسب ألم يبره أحد ألم نجعله عينين 
ولسنان وشفتائين وهدينا النجدائين فلا أقتهام العقبة وما أدراك ما العقبة فك ورقبة أو إتوم في يوم إذ مصقبة يتيما ذا مقربا أو مسكينا ذا متربا ثم كان الذين آمنوا وتوسوا بالصبر وتوسوا بالمرحمة أولئك أشحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بعيتنا هم أشحاب المغشمة عليهم نار مصعدة الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقدوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من الفشر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى موت الفجر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر حياة لله سرور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم السلام ومنك السلام تبارك في الله رب 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة في حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد حديثنا وحب لنا من دونك رحمة إنك أنت الرحاب الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين You all hold for a few announcements, please. Community, community announcements. Only a few. Once again, assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah, barakatuh. We thank uh, Imam Muhammad Abdul Rashid for that excellent khutbah on what we got coming right around the corner, the month of Ramadan, and. Uh, Ramadan is anticipated to begin on Monday or Tuesday. That's June the 6th or June the 7th. And uh, we plan on having Tawari prayer here every night as usual, as well as an iftar every evening after Maghrib. And we need sponsors of these iftars. And uh, if you want to sponsor an iftar, plan on having enough food to feed 80 to 100 people. And if you're funding it, expect to have at least $800 on a weeknight and $1,200 on a weekend. Uh, I guess we can get a little creative on that because we're not going to play mignon and, uh, you know, all this expensive uh, caviar and all that stuff. But uh, tomorrow we have the share food distribution and we can always use brothers so that we don't have to tax any of the uh, seniors and pioneers to help with that and you come out for Fajr prayer and the uh, share food distribution starts at 7 a.m. I've seen a couple of people here that are part of that monthly I think brother Albert uh, I saw Sultan and others if you got any questions you know uh, about what you'll be doing ask them they can help you with that also tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., the Muslim American Veterans Association post number one, which is the post here, the first, and first post that started it all, will be having our monthly meeting. So if you're a veteran, please uh, come out at 9.30 a.m. And the brother who just gave the kutbah, he's one of our, uh, we'll say, living legends because he was the first Muslim chaplain in all of the United States military in the history of the United States. Also tomorrow, there's a woman's spa. The flyer is on the back of the uh, uh, bulletin, and that's from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., and they have professional uh, spa services, yoga, and other health and wellness uh, seminars, and that starts at 2 p.m. Uh, tomorrow at the Holy Redeemer Church down the street on 206 New York Avenue. Uh, also tomorrow from 4 to 8 p.m. is the uh, monthly family game night and potluck. Uh, bring out your whole family and enjoy uh, socialization and playing games in the community. Uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. there will be a board of advisors meeting down the street at 1505 as well as at 10 a.m., the weekly youth weekend program, Cycle 5, will be held here in the Masala at 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And if you have a telephone, you can call in to the Study El-Islam conference call every week at 11.30 a.m. And the one this week will be the final one before uh, the month of Ramadan. And I think Sister Anissa Dewan will be scheduled to speak. She's the sister who was here for the Mother's Day program a couple weeks ago. Also, do we have any uh, members of the E-Committee here right now? 
If you if you if you're here and you're from the E committee, raise your hand. We need help for people. We always say we want to have the best E possible. So, uh, Sister uh, Farah Shakur, right there, she's uh, one of the leaders in this, and we need uh, volunteers to help so we can have one of the best E's possible this year. So please uh, see her or sign up downstairs in the office. We need your help. And uh, save the date, graduates. All of those who graduated from programs from preschool, kindergarten, high school, middle school, college certification programs, uh, somewhere in July, right now we're saying July the 17th, but we'll have flyers out for that. We want to honor and acknowledge you and uh, want you to feel also uh, a sense of uh, respect from us that, that we uh, appreciate what you're doing and you know you're going to help yourselves as well as your families and the community. All the other uh, announcements are in the bulletin. Please uh, make dua for our sick and shut in. Uh, the key bar is going on. They have several things planned for next week. A movie, Jackie Robinson movie, uh, a screening of uh, Disney, uh, 101 Dalmatians, as well as a pre-Ramadan uh, brunch. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, good weekend, good week. See you next Juma. Assalamu alaikum.